All right, here's a brief demo of installing Ubuntu 14.04 on a multi-drive BTRFS root. Uh, it's uh, the test hardware is a um, Pentium 4 Prescott server that I got for the, uh, for free that was surplus with four surplus from other machines. Uh, 500 gig uh, SATA drives, SATA 1, um, and I have in it right now a stick of uh, Ubuntu 14.04 server which I have slightly modified to add a new boot option that adds a pre-seed file that all, that's a copy of the Ubuntu pre server pre-seed with a couple of lines added to bring up the network console automatically. Unfortunately, it's not quite that automatic, so I still need to have a screen on it to uh, set, get it up to the point where the uh, where the uh, console comes up, uh, which sadly means that it is in the same room as I am in. It's not in another room, just on the network, so you can hear it buzzing away in the background. So I'm going to console into it now. If I get the right window. All right. Matt, there we go. My key, of course, isn't on the server, so I have to uh, use a password. All right. This is pretty uh, standard. I like to uh, call my user server admin. Uh, password. I'm using a very weak password. Don't do this yourself. But considering that I'm going to deban the whole server shortly after making this video, it's probably okay. Uh, da, 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 da. uh this part should be fairly common to anyone who's ever installed Ubuntu server before. It's very similar to the previous installer. Uh we want to go manual install. So you can see I've got four drives here. They're configured in the RAID controller as uh just the JBOD. Um I actually have four physical drives. Um, interestingly, this uh, server RAID controller won't let me expose the disks directly, so I have to create arrays in the, in the RAID controller that are just a direct map of one drive. So, got to create a partition table on each device. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a um, RAID 1 on uh, with one small partition on each device for the boot partition. Um, the boot partition uh, just Grub just doesn't like BTRFS that much uh, when it's spanned across multiple devices. So we shall make uh, three partitions on each device. Um, a boot partition, which it'll be MD RAID RAID 1, uh, a swap partition on each device. Um, I'm just going to make them direct swap partitions. You can do them as RAID 1 if you need your machine to stay up in the event of a single drive failure. Uh, you can do them as RAID 0, which has exactly the same effect as, uh, as if you just made swap partitions in the first place it will just have an extra layer in there um, and the third partition on the first drive it's going to be the BTRFS on each additional drive is going to be unused I'm going to create the partition just so I don't have to F disk a running system um, but uh, it won't be added till later let's begin use as 
Physical volume parade. Bootable flag on. So we want to create all of these partitions before we go in and configure software raid because uh, it just plain doesn't work if you uh, set up the raid partitions and then go set up raid and then go back and try and set up the other partitions. Uh, I had all kinds of trouble when I tried to do it that way. So do it this way. Alright, so there we got a RAID partition on each device. I go by and create a small... Ooh, that was wrong. Primary, beginning. Swap. We get 8 gig swap on each drive. It will give tons of swap. You probably don't need this much on uh, this machine for sure because I will not doing anything on it. Look at that. So now we need one more partition on each drive. So the first disk, rest of the drive, I like to make a primary. We go btrfs, mount point is slash, label, rootfs. So These guys, we create a partition, rest of the drive, primary, and we use as, do not use the partition. This is going to create the partition, but not format it and not uh, add it to any file system. Um, so later we can go in and add it to the BTRFS. Uh, if you create it, if you don't create it now, then you have to, you have to uh, F disk your uh, running system, which is little on the dangerous side um, and if you create it as a BTRFS now then it won't let you add it later unless the tool has changed drastically since last time I tried to do that so we got raid swap do not use, raid swap do not use, raid swap do not use and raid swap BTRFS so now we can figure out our raid. Write changes, which is going to do a whole lot of formatting. Okay, create an MD device, making it raid one, two active devices, two spares, uh, SDA one and SDB one are my active devices. Spare devices, SDC1, SDD1. Uh, with that set up, you can uh, survive one 
drive failing, and then a second drive failing. Third drive fails and you're toast. So remember to replace your drives in a timely fashion. So we got one partition here on RAID 0 device number 1. Use as ext4. Mount point. Boot. Mount options defaults. Use a standard label. I like to use labels for file systems because uh, then when you edit your FS tab later, you can mount it as the label file system. Done. Okay, so we got uh, boot S uh, boot file system on a RAID with two hot spares and we have one sector of unusable space on that. Lovely. Um, and then we got so we got the RAID device swap BTRFS on the first drive, the rest of these guys, big section of unused. We can use that later. Go to finish. Rate changes.
This is clearly the boring part of the video. Uh, so, uh, here at this stage you install whatever you happen to need. Uh, in this case I'm going to install OpenSSH server for sure, because if I don't install it I won't get back in without walking over to the keyboard on the other machine. Also required for this video to, to work. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, Grub only gets installed in the f master boot record of the first drive in this example, so we're going to have to go in and uh, fix that. Alright, so she's going to reboot. server ramp up pull the stick out well that's coming up 
I'm going to clear the screen and clear up my known hosts. Server is still booting, and the server takes a while to boot. It's uh, not even posted yet because of the amount of uh, various configuration stuff on the server. RAID controller, an IPMI server, and all that fun stuff. Now booting Ubuntu. Yep, it is up. Cancel that because my key's not on there. I'm logged in. Surf admin at test DC. Okay. So gonna update the uh, apt repository locally and then uh, do a just upgrade to make sure that we've got the latest version of everything.
All right. Let's make sure that uh, Bdraft FS Tools is the latest version. Already is. Okay, give it a reboot to make sure that the library that it's using is the same one that applies to that kernel that it just installed. Uh, help suffice to do it. to the other monitor to watch the progress, but you can't see what it's doing. Get all kinds of hardware check messages on the screen. This is normal. Is up. Get remote back in. Cancel the key again. Okay, let's uh, have some fun here. Apparently MD stats no longer a command. Uh did it do? Of course, I can't remember how to show the status off the top of my head. So we've got two gigs of data used, uh, da -da -da, one gig for data, metadata. So uh, BTR FS. Um, just 
just do this first. So we see SATA SDA3 uh, root file system has size 451 gigs, used 1.1 gigs, uh, and home. You see it has the same stats because it, it um, the Ubuntu server will create a home directory um, subvolume. See the mount list. Uh, it's using the root subvolume of SDA3 as uh, the root, and uh, the home volume. Sorry, the default volume, I should say, of uh, SDA3 um, is uh, home. And I have a cat meowing at the door. One moment. Apparently a uh, bad thing if the door is closed with this cat in the house. Okay, let's add some file system. So, stb3. If I type it correctly, uh, of course, it helps if I sudo. Cat wants back out. Ah, I see what's going on. So we see we have 1.1 gigs. We have the same amount of space used, and just under two terabytes of total space. Now, that's actually not very good because the uh, data is only uh, one copy. The meta metadata will be uh, two copies, but the data itself only one copy. So let's uh, fix that and get it to functionally the same as being a uh, RAID 1, but spread across all the drives. So, we go BTRFS, file system, balance. Start minus D. Go deconvert RAID 1. Oh, sorry, wrong one. M convert. RAID. Helps if I spell RAID right. Of course, you need permissions to do that. Takes a little while.
Excellent. See, we got two gigs used, 1.8 terabytes uh, total space. So it shows um, 1.8 terabytes still available. The actual available space, technically, that is how much space is available, but the reality is that it will be um, half that that's usable because it's making two copies of all of the data. So, um, so that if you lose one drive, you can um, survive. So, that said, if you lose one drive and you have enough space on the remaining drives, Um, for all the data that was on that drive plus a little slack you can just re remove the device and rebalance which is functionally similar to having a RAID 0 sorry ooh, wrong RAID 1 with hot spares um, except that it won't fill up until all the drives are actually full and uh, it'll spread the, the access load across the drives, which should speed things up theoretically. Uh, I haven't done any benchmarking on it, but should theoretically speed things up. So I'm going to stop the video now, and I'm going to do another video for how to fix the RAID in a little while. But I don't have time for that right now. So, or, sorry, how to fix the uh, grub for the RAID uh, shortly. Thank you, and uh, have fun installing whatever operating system you want to install on uh, multi-drive BTRFS. Thanks, bye.